Welcome back to our channel to go find Elungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we we'll post reaction videos each and every day. So, if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. A big shout out to everyone that keeps on subscribing to our channel. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys are doing we are very very grateful i hope you're doing all right and may you stay blessed so today i'm actually going to be reacting to this a big shout out to the person that suggested this i'm going to be reacting to some rukia root is a treatment dr zakina i don't know how to pronounce that forgive me but that's what we're reacting to today so without wasting time let's get into the video we asked a question that what are the gins and can affect the people and he read a news that the two sisters who had bad gin in them and they killed their father news i haven't read but as far as gin is concerned the two creation one is the seen and one is the unseen creation the angels don't have a free will of them whatever allah says they believe the human means and a jinn they have a free will they can either obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they can disobey so amongst the creation who have a free will are the human being and the jinn the human being, the seen creatures, the jinn normally they are unseen. Normally, in normal circumstances, they are unseen. So these creations have a free will. So therefore, the Quran was revealed for the complete world, including the jinn and the human being. Even they have a free will. Like in the human beings, there are people who follow Allah's commandments. They are the good people, like the angels, or better than the angels. Those who disobey, they become brothers of the Satan. Similarly, the jinns. Those who obey Allah's man's commandment, they are good jinns and the bad jinns. The bad jinns are the Satan. And Allah says in the last chapter of the Quran, Surah Nas, chapter number 114, verse number 1 to 6, That there are people who whisper in your ear and withdraw. These are the ones who are the people who whisper in your ear and withdraw. These are the ones who are amongst the men and jinns. That means the Satan category, the evil category of two types. Amongst the jinn and the men. The men who are seen, and the disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the seen satans. The unseen satans are the jinns. So the jinns is a creation which has a free will. Like human beings that are good and bad. Similarly in the jinn also there are good and bad. And can they come in a human being? Yes, they can come. A human being can be possessed by jinn. And for this, the two surahs of the Quran, the Mu'azzatain, chapter number 113 and 114, the last two surahs of the Quran, the Mu'azzatain, the one I recited, Surah Nas and Surah Falak. These two surahs were revealed as a treatment, as a remedy for this. So there are jinn. Science hasn't reached that far to completely identify this concept. So therefore, in science, there is no 100% proof jinns are there, but neither is there proof that there are no jinns. There are certain diseases which the psychologists say it is more with the brain with the human body and they cannot categorize in any of the scientific diseases which is known. Science hasn't reached that far. Maybe inshallah 20 years later, 30 years later, 100 years later, science will advance and they will agree with the concept of the Quran. Since the Quran says there are jinn, we have to believe in it. There are good jinns, there are bad jinns, etc. But what we have to do is we have to have trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the two surahs which have been revealed in the Quran for the treatment is Surah Falakh and Surah Nas. So regarding the situation of these two sisters, I don't know whether it existed or not. But you have to realize that to say that the jinn normally always say that people take advantage of the position and they try and make a fast buck. So you have people, you know, you go in every nook and corner in most of the religion, whether it be Hinduism, Christianity or Islam. You have religious people making a fast buck, fast money. They do something, you know, they throw some powder, bhuti, this, that, whether it be Baba. So we have to be careful of that. And they take your last mother. My advice to anyone who says it's the person is possessed, show your child or your friend to a normal doctor. Then you can show to a specialist and finally to a psychiatrist. And after there's no cure, then you can search and say that it can fall in the category. Because normally some of the diseases are more of psychological disease, which a layman will say it's a possession of jinn, which may not be. That doesn't mean jinn don't exist. Jinn exist, a human being can be possessed. And there's a book written by Dr. Bilal Phillips, rather the translation of one of the books on jinns and demons that give more details. And there are very few people who really know how to treat the jinn based on Quran and Sunnah. 
And normally, the moment the person tries to make a fast money out of it, you can identify shortcut. If he asks you for certain gain, then chances of him being in that category 99.99%. But if he initially doesn't ask for money, that doesn't mean that he doesn't fall in that category. He may later on milk the cow. Fine? So many a time they have habit of milking big cows or small cows, they leave aside. Oh, who has money? Has to be a genuine case. You know, who has money? Has to be a genuine case. If you have money, you have to that doesn't mean that it is a genuine case. Maybe taking from those people who are rich, and there are people who always approach and ask me to tell them that first go to a doctor, then go to a psychiatrist, and then if they give up all the hope and there's no medical treatment for it, then you can think of a possibility that it can be a position of the jinn, etc. And then you have to approach a person. I should have seen his lifestyle. Lifestyle also should be according to Quran Sunnah. If his lifestyle is not according to Quran Sunnah, how can he treat you? And the treatment is but natural. You have to recite verse of the Quran, the hadith mentioning that. But those who are the specialist in that field go to him rather than to any person, Tom Dick and Harry. Hope that answers the question. Interesting. So this entire time I've been thinking, do you guys believe in exorcisms? Because there have been movies out there and if you watch the way these exorcisms are carried out, when the demon in the person manifests, you even just want to run out of the room even though it's just on TV. But um, I don't know how I feel about such things. Like Dr. Zaki Naik said, it's a psychological thing. Maybe it's a mental thing. It is a mental issue, actually. But it's up to us to actually take the right steps before resorting to someone who you say will exercise the demon out of you or whatever the case is. And like I said, this was very, very interesting. My battery is low. So let me just charge it and react to the rest of the stuff in a couple of minutes.